Weapons online. Hello, everybody. Welcome to ISC Intersphere Coalition Swiss Style Week Two. We have Merkstar versus Furia. I have today my homeboy Cyclone Jack with me. Say hi. Cyclone. What's going on, cats? Good to see y'all. Don't mind the picture of Draven. I will be switching that over right now. Just been trying to deal with the, getting the teams in order here. This will be a good match because Furia was placed second place in the EU Div B last season at MOR, as well as Merkstar is a Div B decent team. I know they did well in the last season as well. What do, uh, what do the stats say about these two teams? What are we looking at here? Because I'll be honest, I'm not, uh, I'm not um, big on uh, European teams, but from what I'm seeing... Uh, these teams are kind of close. That is how I see it. I see them both being pretty close here. But, uh, so it'd be an interesting matchup between the two different continents and see how they play against each other. Just what I actually like to see the most. So he's got two teams that are matched up pretty, pretty close. The Jarl's list numbers say this is going to be a good fight. The problem is, is that I see with the Jarl's list numbers is they don't always signify true skill on each team. So seeding is going to be interesting, placement is going to be interesting, and performance is going to be interesting. Um, who do we have as far as high performers on the teams? I mean, I recognize Xavier um, is a solid hitter. Who do you got over there on uh, D three O three? When I was looking earlier, looking at Furio, who did we have? Uh, Frio is ranked one oh nine zero soul four six two. I'd have to see who else is in there. Like Vrail twenty nine ranked fifty fifth. So they have some. Like they got four guys in top one thousand. That's gonna be crazy, man. Yeah, because Vero's here, Frio's here. Mm hmm. And we've seen some really interesting strats from HBG. Um, everything from a basement strat where people just ran out of the time to dueling wall strats where two teams just won each other from up on top to, you know, second tier brawl to attempted control to, to rear wall long range lasers. I mean,. It's going to be an interesting fight, I'm thinking. I, I'm with you on that one. It should be good. So we do have both teams in the lobby. So we'll be just waiting for MS to lock and then wait for Furio. Yeah, if anybody's looking at the stat sheets that were on earlier in the pregame, like, yeah, things are pretty close. So I'm... Ex I'm expecting to see an interesting matchup here, which actually happened last night when I talked to uh, CXF, Clan Crossfire. Their games versus uh, SROT, Skate Rangers of Terra. They said it, they lost the first two and won the last three, but they were interesting games, they told me. Mm. I mean, that that's going to make for an interesting... Uh little mix up so um i gotta ask though what drop are you predicting a crab rush <laughs> the, the full crab rush the full crab rush like soup to nuts whole nine yards what are you thinking man oh because what do we got hpg and grim i would expect it in one of the two hpg drops i don't know if you, you want to use crabs in the the grim or canyon drop i mean they have brought large lasers before so i don't ah, it could be anything I would assume I, HBG or Grim, not Canyon. Okay. I mean, if you're talking control and you're talking fast brawl, you could do it just as well HBG as you could Canyon. And I mean, we all know we saw Canyon. I mean, we we, we watched it played in uh, in Worlds 2016, and we had some teams that ran Epsilon brawl. We we saw some teams that tried Theta brawl. It's all possible. 
Yeah, no, you got that right. Weapons online. Right, looks like MS is locked. Hello, everybody. Welcome to ISC Inter. Didn't mute myself. Didn't mute yourself. What? Oh, when the NWO leagues comes live, I always forget oh. that it's it's muted and then it comes on. Hmm. Pro streamer stats right here. We're doing it. That's right. We 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 do this for a living, by the way, folks. I don't know if you know. During the day, Belmont casts um, Rocket League. It's a thing. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> the Rocket League. Also, sometime later in the match, we got a thousand MC to give away. I think. Hmm. We got giveaway codes. I'm down. Well, we don't get them, obviously. Though that's what sucks. That's right. All right, we have both teams locked. So. Looks like we're ready to go. Whenever you're ready. Let's do this. Weapons online. I think somebody was hassling me about the Ace's wild stinger being too loud, but I hear nothing when it changes, so I have no freaking idea. And I did download the other ones that uh, were made that were quieter, but I thought I was using the quiet one in case anybody asks. Yeah, I put my wife to bed early on her birthday so I could do this. Well, happy birthday, Mrs. Belmont. Mrs. Belmont. <laughs> Alrighty, what are you looking at? Tell me what you got over there. In. Um, on the Merkstar side? Looks like we're looking at a Grasshopper, two Vulcan 5Ts. Oh, two Grasshopper 5Ps, a Phoenix Hawk, and a Quick Draw 4G. We got placement near Gamma and Epsilon. It's gonna be an interesting deck. It looks kind of like a mixed laser brawl. Oh, yeah, and they're going high wall quick. Mm-hmm. We have gained Epsilon. Uh, on the uh, Furious side, yeah, we got a Bushwhacker X2, Black Knight, Frebuchet. I almost didn't know what that was for a second there. Two Kintaro 18s and a Wolfhound 2. Interesting mix of mechs. This is interesting. Um, we've got an Epsilon cap, and we've got two Vulcans that look like they're pushing in the center, and a Phoenix off that looks like he's trying to grab top. Um, and up on the wall over here, we've got that quick draw and those two grasshoppers that are just setting up, ready to go, just sitting in Overwatch. I feel like Fury had brought the brawl for this one. They were not ready for that long-range game of Merkstar up on the top deck there. Or the yeah. top wall. It's not all top wall. These Vulcans are sitting low. Looks like we got a raid incoming from Toaster. One of our, uh, our other esteemed Shadowcasters we always see with Saruman. So thanks a lot, Toaster, man. Very much appreciated, buddy. Hope you're having a great day today. Yeah, they were... Oh, the okay. what the heck? That's a uh, that's a suicide by Merkstar. I didn't even see how the hell that happened. I knew he was on the wall. I don't know what. Yeah, like I said, what the hell happened? Mm. Well, that's not going to be advantageous to them. No, not at all. Not at all. I thought Merkstar had a good thing going here, but now with Furia having the two cap lead holding basement, I don't know if. This will be interesting to see. They, well, they might get locked in the basement, though, with <laughs> the epic fail for Talos. You got that right. <laughs> I still love you, buddy. Yeah, I like the way they're on the wall here, nice and spread out. Yeah, they, they're playing map control at this point. 
what do you got over with uh, D303? What are they trying to pull over there? Is this just classic basement strat action? So we head into the basement and take a look for myself. Yeah, it looks like they're just spreading out in the basement. and Two Kentaro 18s, a Bushwhacker X2, a Trebuchet 7, and a Black Knight, and a Wolfhound 2. Okay. And we've got those two Vulcans moving for Kappa for a cap. Yeah, Frio peeking out here. Democles is on him, though. Not a good place to be. Mm. Ooh, dropping strikes, too. Command confirming that we have possession of Kappa. I Ooh. know. I know Virial got hit with that. Mm hmm. There might have been another one, too. Got some long range jag action. I'll poke it from that one side in the basement. It's back and forth trade with some artillery fire. I think they're, yeah, they're going to push out and try to take those two with Kappa, the two Vulcans. Yeah. That's a good strategy. You want to take out some of their quick guys as soon as you can. Looks if like they're they rushing get those to two them. Vulcans on Kappa. Yeah, I don't know if, it's gonna, if they're going to be able to catch it up. I mean, at least you are gone already. Yeah, but not a bad idea. You can take Kappa back quick and then duck mm -hmm. out. And they've still got two points of control up on the wall. Three points of control up on the wall. But the only issue that I'm seeing is they're all huddled up together. And they're not seeing those four mechs going for Kappa point and securing that entrance to that wall. Oh, one of them falling down, though. Who was that, Black Templars? Yes, sir. Mm hmm Yeah, Venro's got to be careful. Although, I think that's his... Oh, no, that's his... I don't think that torso matters. The right torso? It's the left one that has the weapons, isn't it? On the Bushwhacker? Uh, actually, on the X2, I believe it's both side torsos. Okay, so you probably still have to be careful then, because with those two rotary AC2s... Yeah. Oh, another beautiful strike on Furia. From where? I don't even know. Jesus, this is getting dicey. And we've got open components on the Grasshopper and on the Quick Draw. Oh, we got a battle underground now. Are they pushing? Is it a little four-man brawl? Venro and the Trebuchet. That Trebuchet is open, Vulcans. that Bushwhacker is open, and those Vulcans look relatively fresh. Pretty frickin' fresh. Yeah, this is... Ooh, and down goes that Bushwhacker. It is hard to a, find good space in here to see things. Was that a Bushwhacker XL check? Please don't tell me that was an XL Bushwhacker. I don't know. Well, it does, I see no torso, no center now, so... Oof, okay. Well, those well, ones didn't get the cap, so... Here comes both of those Kentaros and that Trebuchet and that Black Knight. So things are about to get looking really dicey if those... uh. Those Vulcan stick around, but I think they may have taken off. Yeah, I think they're gone. Yep, up top already and out. Just enough to pick off that Bushwhacker and even up to 66. That Black Knight is down at 52%. That Trebuchet is down at 55 And that one Grasshopper up on the wall that I was worried about is down at 43 yeah, Xavier bringing two heavy PPCs in his quick draw. And he's going to keep Overwatch for the two Vulcans again as they go for Kappa. Hmm. Yeah, it's nice to see the odds evened out now. Yeah, nice slow strat to start this this match out. Oh, why are people shooting when I'm drinking? I gotta get over there. Yeah, Democles down to 34% of that grasshopper. Command confirming that we have possession of Oh, he's open everywhere. Still got all his weapons, though. Oh, Frio just pushing out too far, getting hit with the heavy PPCs. Yep, those PPC fires, just it's punishing them. That Grasshopper just taking a little too much damage, down to 21% from Damocles. 
Did he just drop a strike on himself? Uh, I think he might have. A... No, no, no. Yeah, I, I guess he did. And Damocles goes down from that wolfhound. I guess he's the one that I want to strike. I'm so lost on how that happened. I... Oh, the wolf bound behind him. Yeah, that makes sense then. Yep. Sorry, I can't see things. From down at the capture point off of Epsilon. Hit him just perfect. Yeah, Black Templar's in a bad place now with that grasshopper. Although he is not stopping him from taking the point there. He's trying and to focus. there goes that Black Knight from that Vulcan 5T. This is just getting brutal. We've got two Kentaros and a Wolfhound too. Versus yeah. that quick draw, that Grasshopper 5P, still 70%. Yeah, and those two Vulcan 5Ts that are roving like a kill pack together. Yeah, those on. Vulcans are still super fresh. And the cap lead is not super advantageous to anybody yet, so. No. I mean, it's something that was discussed. Three caps, you're still looking at like a 10 minute fight to hold for a full cap, so. Even with a full three cap, unless you're playing keep away, but it doesn't look like that with the brawl that's going on down here at the entryway. And there goes that Kentaro 18 taken down by that Grasshopper, and we've still got the Grasshopper and the Vulcan 5T just mixing it up here, and here comes the other Kentaro. Yeah, we got Vamblery here. But they gotta finish Black Templars. Even Xavier's mm -hmm. in a bad place, he should be dropping down. This is getting dicey. And that 5T taking up the other Kentaro 18. Oof. Oh, this is gonna be it for General Combo. And General Combo does go down to that 5T. Ooh, that murder pack is just sheer brutality. We're finally seeing smoke off that one Vulcan 5T. Um, piloted, I'm assuming, by the Juice is Loose. Yes, it is. Just pulling up that capture point off that spawn. And, and that's good, game. Good win for Merkstar right there. Yeah, that's game. I wonder how much different that would have been if Prototellus didn't die at the beginning. You know, we can only speculate, man. <laughs> Let's look at the damage spread. What did everybody pull off? Holy crap, Demonicles yeah. won in that Grasshopper 5 people in 664. Off that wall. Jesus. That's some solid damage, man. What do you got over there on uh, D three O three? Uh, run me through the rest of those numbers so I can run this frickin' the good lobby information. We've, we've got Black Templars Raptors doing three eleven damage with one kill and five assists, almost identical to the other Grasshoppers, uh, kill and assists. Um, Xavier doing three oh five and five assists and that quick draw four G. We've got both of those Vulcan five Ts doing a respectable weapons online with three kills and three assists and one kill and four assists from the juices loose. Uh, who managed to pull it out to the bitter end. There we go, I got the sheet up. There was all oh, 41 team damage from El Kazik and 29 from Venril on the Furious side. Yeah, those Tick and Tar 18s didn't get to do much, yeah, that's for sure. Mm hmm. Bit disappointing to see. Oh, yeah, so. How the frick? Switch, yeah, just switch the teams. It's one by one. But yeah, Damocles, holy crap, holy. That was... Those are some great numbers for drop one. That was impressive, most definitely impressive. Uh, how do you see what on the mechs? Yeah, that's a uh, press P when you're in spectator, and then you got to click a mech and then right click it, and then it should bring up that little screen in the bottom right that tells you what he has, what's injured. I'm sorry, say that again. 
when you're in spectator mode to see what the mech has and what's injured on him. Press P to let your mouse be free. Left click uh, the gotcha. mech and then right click the mech. Gotcha, and then gotcha. from there you can just left click the next mech and it, it'll pop up with the next guy. All right. Weapons online. It's weird they changed the controls over, and I I honestly didn't look at the PDF to take a glance at uh, the new controls and how they were changed. All right, looks like they're ready. I'm gonna be pulling the different pilots to the different sides for the uh, next drop. Yeah, because now we got flip mode HPG. I don't know if I'm going to see much change on this one unless they just decide to brawl the second one out, but I thought uh, mm -hmm. MS had a good strategy in that first drop there. It was definitely interesting, I'll tell you what. I liked they, it. I liked what I saw. What, they got 100, 110, 120 kilometer per hour Vulcans. They got a Phoenix Hawk still, 100, 120 at least. Mm -hmm. So three fast mediums, or whatever a Vulcan is. And then the high guys on the wall, two grasshoppers and the quick draw. It's a great drop deck right there. Weapons online. Let me send you the map strat. All right. If we can take a look, see at that. There we go. So it looks, it looks like the uh, the idea was to use the two Vulcans as uh, a roving cap and, and brawl team, and just have the Overwatch from the uh, the Grasshoppers, which you know apparently pulled off pretty well. <laughs> yeah, watching them from take the top deck there and spread out. All the little guys went to Epsilon and then sneak on through. Yeah, well, we had them take Furia, take the bottom Theta in the basement, and then kind of hold that for a little while. Yeah, because yeah, they didn't pull out until the Vulcans were near Kappa. That was when the Wolf hadn't pulled out, and when the top guys were raining down on them at the entryway before they all pushed after the Vulcans. I thought they had a good thing going when they came out of there, too, but like I said, by the time... The Bushwhacker and the ah, Fudge Snacks, whatever else is. Look at my cheat sheet here. The Trebuchet, I... underground. And they got murdered by the two Vulcans because they were injured from fighting against the two Grasshoppers in the Quick Draw. Yeah, we were looking at just too much punishment at that point. Yeah, they were, they were in a bad place. No backup to help them. Ah, both teams are locked already. God, I never get time to talk around here. You're seriously. Not like I had much to say, to be honest. I'm sorry. To be honest, guys, I'm a little nervous doing this for the first time. You figured streaming so much, I'd be good to go, but... Because uh... <laughs> now this is business, baby. Yeah, right. Well, it's always business, but... All right, well, it looks like they're go ready to go. Are you ready to go, sister? Weapons uh, ready. online. Right, let's do this. I'd like to remind everybody to thank Kozind Indigo whenever you have a chance for the beautiful stat sheets that he made for ISC as well as a few of them for the MOR. They are beautiful and look great to me. So, Absolutely, the work you needed to put sheets like that together. I mean, it's a really nice representation and to be able to link all that information together so easily is really, really nice for the casters and either, even for other players be able to check out their own stats and the teams they're about to fight. Nice. Yeah. Like, and I'm just a button pusher. I just talk and push buttons, so keep my, keep my <laughs> lobby stats in order and not do a radio cast. That's all I'm here to do. Yeah. Him and Curlon do a great job in getting us organized to make this stuff look good for everybody, so 
Thank you to the both of them. Here we go. Let me walk you through what Fury brought, even though I'm not close to them right now. We got the two Vulcan 5Ts, and then on the other group of four, we have the Trebuchet Bushwhacker X1, a Vindicator 1X, and a Mauler MX90. They're all going through the doors. They're not going high ground. What do you got on the Merkstar side? I dig my sand, my friend. Um, over on the Merkstar side, I see another pair of Grasshopper 5Ps. Two more Vulcan 5Ts, a Quick Draw 5G, and a Phoenix Hawk 2. Lining it up almost identical as the last match, and they're already hill humping up the wall with those yeah. Grasshoppers and that Quick Draw. So we'll see how this goes, man. <laughs> Watching Xavier and Black Templar Raptor just rubbing, rubbing shoulders trying to get up this wall. And he's got coming through the wall, the Vulcan pair and the, the Phoenix Hawk. Looks like they're uh, they're sneaking around to the left side. I don't think Furia sees them. And if they do, this is going to get interesting quick. Furia pushing right into Merkstar already. Merkstar taking the, uh, that position up on the wall. And we've seen this happen before. Um, yeah, that's going to be a weird saw, brawl. Mm -hmm, so the different teams, we saw something similar out of Black Omen and White Knight Legion. Um, White Knight Legion not pushing through the gate, but actually holding near the center of HPG, and Black Omen just taking shots from that wall, just ripping into mechs, whipping them open. And we've already got smoke coming from one of the Vulcan 5Ts. Yeah, Frio pushing it way too far, giving a line of sight to all top three mechs on the wall here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they were hoping that they were kind of come through one door and brawl, but yeah, like you said, they ran top top wall and this is a terrible place for Furia right now and it looks like Furia's got four mechs in the middle to the awesome or the awesome no and there goes the Vindicator 1x already heavily damaged from uh, d303 from Furia yeah he was fighting three guys the two Vulcans and the Phoenix mm -hmm. Hawk 2 that was not a good place to be they did really well pulling off one mech and just ripping them apart and here we go seeing that Bushwhacker with the three raccoons again fighting against uh, two Vulcans and a uh, Phoenix Hawk. This is going to get dicey quick. Who do you focus on? How do you manage to sit the terrain just right that you've got cover from the guys up in the wall while fighting a brawl deck down below? And can those grasshoppers not get more of a place to actually... And see, there you go. I said it before I could even finish getting it out with, uh, with my stammer. Those uh, I, those grasshoppers are maneuvering to take shots on uh, on this D three hundred three team. Frio nineteen already down to sixty percent in that Vulcan five T. This just looks painful. Yeah, they're in a. Even if they try to get out of here, they're going to be shot down. It's not a good place to be. They're basically screwed. And staying tight to the wall isn't going to help that much. Yeah, frick, I don't know what you do from this point other than get tight in the doorway in the in the gate there and just try to take out. The two try Vulcans take, and the Phoenix Hawk. Try to take angles and be a better shot. That Mauler down to 34%. It's it's almost about time, and there it goes. That Mauler MX-90 and that Bushwhacker 1X is down. Merkstar are looking pretty good. Their lowest neck down at 59%. I, yeah, this is this is it, I believe. We've got two mechs left, a Trebuchet 7M and another Vulcan 5T, but you can't, you can't expect them to pull against a full team of six. Yeah, no. I mean, they're trying. They're twisting, shooting, and holding, but... Yeah, Vera going down that trebuchet. Alcazel going down, and that's it. Oh, that was a massacre. That was rough. That was a 6-0 rough fight. But very well fought from both teams. I'm liking the strats that I'm seeing. These wall strats are really interesting in HPG. This definitely helps when you don't have it on domination. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and something as simple as a three cap, you're forcing 10 minutes on the clock. You're making people do something. Unless they really have the patience to sit in the basement and wait for a basement raw bush. So yeah. definitely interesting to see. Um, over on Merkstar, we got Neil Solon in that Vulcan 5T doing some work. Three kills, two assists, 602 damage. Uh, the juice is loose again, 340 with five assists in the other Vulcan. Protolus doing 326 in that Phoenix Hawk. And we've got Damocles doing 272 in the Grasshopper. 
and Black Templar's Raptors doing 220, with Xavier finishing that roundup with another 195 in that quick draw. Definitely not a bad showing from Merkstar. What do you got over there? Uh. Sorry, I was trying to pull up that. Oh my god, no! What? There we go. Weapons online. You know, when my frickin' statue doesn't want to show, it pisses me off. That's what I'm trying to get going. There we go. Alright, you see the Fury aside, the D303. Yeah, I mean, the gentleman combo with that Bushwhacker X1 still got 305 damage down, so I mean, he did do a decent job. Same with Virial in the Trebuchet with 263, 185, and 150 for the Vulcan Tees, but yeah, just those damage numbers on the MS side. Fury was doing their best to hold off and stay alive. There was just nothing they could do being stuck in that, that gate hole there with both sides being watched and the top. Ruthless. That was sheer brutality, man. That was definitely brutality. But a good fight nonetheless. Great strategy by MS. Mm-hmm. And if we look at the old mappity strat thing, Majigger here, it's almost the same thing, but not. Because so we had what? We had MS Team 2? Yes, we did. We had MS Team 2, and they came back up on top of the wall. Took both sides of the gate as Fury rose in and tried to get them when they were coming through it seemed a bit like a like you said they were trying to catch them off guard and quick but they weren't that wasn't ms strategy no and then they came in and basically pincered them on all points well while furia tried to hang around that charlie drop there and survive basically because it was not because they were getting shot from everywhere every freaking where you could think yeah, you're you're trying to play a power control top with some uh, with some range and anywhere you're trying to go, it it very minimalist in positions that you can actually sneak shots and start getting some solid trades going. I actually like this map. I didn't have to draw much. They went to this area, they fought, <laughs> people died, the end. And that was the end of it. Yeah. So we've got a map swap coming up. We're going to Grim, I believe. Uh, weapons online. Project. Yeah, Scrum Plexus. That's what I thought. My bad. It's on my list here, but totally not my first time. Absolutely know what I'm doing. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> There's no fire here. Yeah, everything's fine. This is normal. I'm not nervous. <laughs> yeah. Something about palm sweaty and mom spaghetti. We got this. I believe we are correct on the sides, though, right? To start out with, or are we swapping teams again? No, we wait. Next drop, we swap. Got it. And we'll do a giveaway, so pay attention, you sons of bitches. I want to give that cash away. I want you to take it. So hang out. But this is basically the spot where SROT was 2-0 and last night. And then Clan Crossfire finished the rest 3-0. And made the 3-2 win over... SROT, so. <sighs> Finish my addiction there. Looks like Fury is locked. Although this was the map that MS destroyed 228 Death from Above on 
at the end of MOR last season. I remember that. They brought the crabs. Was it MOR? Damn it, it was something. It, it was it was a uh, um that was uh, when they were div c before <laughs> they moved up they brought the the crab deck in the last drop mm, yeah okay i know what match you're talking about now and saruman basically exploded mm. i mean it's saruman he gets excited this is why we watch him he's entertaining <laughs> yeah and he will be casting the team defining aces wild versus aces wild matchup for control of all aces wild Stay locked for that on MW Leagues 2 after this match, as well as Draven. Can't remember who's casting it now. Who I the... believe Saruman and Toaster are casting the Aces Wild match, and we've got Draven casting the D4 versus 228 Blackwash match. That is right, Draven, who I had last... Whenever? I can't remember things. He's casting D4 versus Blackwash, he is. Yeah, I'm just waiting. I think Xavier is locked. I think they're good to go. Almost done. I'm just waiting for confirmation, yeah. Mm hmm. We'll get the show on the road. Yeah, it's been interesting so far with some of the drops we've seen in Grim Plexus. There we go. And here we go. Let's get it started. Oh. Weapons. Oh, we've got General Combo. I'm ready. We cannot watch the match. And here we go. That's it. Way to go. Somebody's always messing it up. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of good drops on this map so far with it being such a wide base. I've seen a lot of different strats played on Grim Plexus. I've seen a little bit of range. I've seen a lot of heavy brawl. Um, well, we on watched, different areas, too. We watched Cameron Highlander, Sons of Thunder, beat 2 Snack Snackwash last night in the cap when they just didn't bring the right mechs and the Sons of Thunder brought so many light mechs to just run around and keep the caps. It's a genius method and it worked. Give them one drop. That's all you need. That's 500 MC right there. Yeah, for those of you that aren't, uh, aren't in the know on the exact setup on the rules, um system it is 500 mc per drop correct that you win i believe so that's why it sounded crazy to me Command, coming in. well i'm heading over to the merc star side and immediately i'm seeing an osiris a flea a wolfhound 2 a battlemaster 1g another grasshopper 5p oh and a second battlemaster 1g this is going to be interesting i'm digging it so they got yeah some really fast guys and some heavy guys Yeah, Furia brought the Commando, a Flea 20, a Catapult, an Annihilator, a Rifleman, and the Bushwhacker X1 again. So these teams not caring about dropping five of the same mech. Mmm. We've already got Sigma capped. Yeah, Furia Merc here looking to get Gamma and Kappa right off the bat. Get those two I, I gotta ones. say, Merkstar has been imploring some, uh, some interesting strats. I really... Interested to see what they try pulling off here. We have Gamma. Command confirming that we have possession of Kappa. Those Battlemaster Chonky boys, what do we got on these things? Guess some laser vomit again. Yeah. Long range laser. This is going to be interesting. I want to see where they set up the trade. Um, it looks like they're pushing over towards Gamma now. Um, fast movers just high tailing it up at Osiris, the Flea, and the Wolfhound. Wolfhound tentatively peeking around that corner for Gamma, and they literally see no one over there. The only mech that's still close to Gamma. Is that little commando, uh, Vamberly yeah, from D three hundred three from Furia? Yeah, it's been weird for them to hang out at the Kappa point because, like I said, they're about to lose Gamma right now. Mm hmm. 
And if they hold that back wall there behind Epsilon, I remember whoever control uh, what freaking team was it that held that back? I think it was Two Two A Blackwatch. I can't remember who they were playing though. They held that three lead cap point back there from behind Epsilon and just murdered everybody. Didn't let anybody get it. But my memory's pretty shitty, so don't trust me. It trust other man. people. When you start getting older like us Mac Dads, things happen, man. You forget where you left your pants last night. Yeah. Because yeah, I think definitely Merkstar's in the, the better position here, holding this back wall. Mm -hmm. They got eyes on both cap points. They've got that one Wolfhound off to the side. They've got one mech on Gamma doing a quick cap. Or is he sitting for the whole thing? It looks like he's sitting for the whole thing on Gamma. Yeah, they got lots of long-range mechs here with those ER large lasers. <clears throat> yeah. And they've got elevation. If they start swinging around the Gamma side, all they have to do is move just a little bit. That one battle master on the one side is going to have a clear line of sight from where I'm sitting. Literally onto the capture point. Um... Onto both capture points. This is this is a perfect spot where they they can literally see both. They've got wide open terrain. These battle masters with just enough range. They're just going to sit here and try to control this. No, it's a very good strategy by Merc Stark. Like I said, I know it worked for somebody else before. So, especially with that annihilator on the Furia side, it take it's going to take a long time to get him anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I don't think where he is is the right place to be. Yeah, we got Vamberly and Venro coming in now. Ooh, and here goes the long range laser fire already on Gamma as uh, two Fury pilots try to take back uh, try to take back Gamma, but with that artillery strike and with a couple hits, yeah, it's gonna make things a little dicey. Yeah, they're all they have to do is a light scraping with a laser, and you're not taking back that point. And here comes another strike down on Gamma. They're not making this easy at all. They're they're not giving up that two cap lead. They're just gonna play control here. Yeah, and all they have to do is shift back and forth between the two points and just sit and wait. They've got wide open terrain to just lay fire down range. Yeah, like I said, just gotta neck them, and that's what they're doing. Another artillery strike down on Gamma. No. Yeah, they're gonna have a tough time flipping this thing. It's interesting though that Merkstar is not pushing. Like you said, they're just holding that back point. They're just doing what they can. Well, they're playing. They're playing power control. They've got a position where they can just throw down on, on either side. They don't need to move. That is true. Yeah, both mechs have been skimmed by me. <laughs> Artillery strikes so far. Yeah, Xavier playing it smart just being out of range as well. Mm -hmm. And Wolfhound too. And they've had enough. They're they're leaving Gamma alone. That's it. Yeah, Xavier coming in. Gonna recap it like a champ. He knows he's got backup. Now we got the long journey for the rest of the Furia guys. So that flea at 87 and that commando at 86 really didn't take much damage, but that commando was already smoking, which leaves a little concern. Um, just abandoning the position. Merkstar is still holding their power position, not moving anywhere, not in a rush to do anything or go anywhere, just to chill. A certain dominance with that long range from those battle masters. Oh yeah, his arm is open in orange. It's not the end of the world yet, but not great. Oh, well, it's left yeah. arm, so that's fine. And here we go, more shots down range on those two trying to cap, and Mercs are just saying, no, get out, this is my house. Yeah, Venro going down to 69%, yeesh. Yeah, that, that flea isn't supposed to be taking damage like that. Oh, here we go. 
ripping shots again. And it looks like Fury is actually moving back from Kappa across towards Theta. But what are they going to do? Or are they going to try to push that Sigma and, and take something and end up getting chewed up? Or are they just going to move and head towards Gamma? Yeah, I almost feel like they should have been circling the counter NASCARing the whole time so you could have rolled at, and finished with all six guys at Sigma and then just kept I mean, rolling. If they really want to force the brawl, they could push straight across into Woo, and there goes Venerable in that flea. Game over. That's a five to six lead right there. Um, if they really wanted to, they could push straight towards Absalon, move to the one or the other side of that big rock outcropping and just force the brawl. I mean, with a long range deck like that. Well, and Van has got to get out of here. He's, he's their last light. He's the only guy who can do any capping for them at a decent speed, so... Mm -hmm. You can't lose him. No. And like I said, the rest of the Fury guys, they got to start pushing. Yeah, and it looks like this little wolfhound is just saying, no, this is it. Especially when you know how hot those mechs can get on the Merkstar side. You just got to close oh. that distance. Oh, absolutely. We got a little trade in here with the rifleman back and forth. Fired off some auto cannon fire and some blue laser fire with that battle master. Peeking from behind Epsilon. But uh it looks like that uh that battle master really isn't taking much damage. He's just kinda chilling. Just, yeah, alright. Take your shots, I got this all day. We got armor to burn. Yeah, I don't know if he would be doing what, one damage at that range? About that. But the rifleman's not doing anything either. Oh, all that fire on Xavier. Oh, only the missiles hit him. Did I miss missiles? We miss have Lerms missiles. on this team. We do. General Combo and the Catapult 8-1 with LRM-60, 220s, oh and 210s. Oh my god. Really? We've got more Lerms in comp. This is interesting. Oh, and more DACA. That's another triple rack to Bushwhacker in Noob Green on the battlefield. This is interesting. Okay. And we've got Fury are loading up by Sigma. Um, Merc stars lining up. They've got that one wolfhound a little overextended. I'd be a little worried about being alone back there. And you've got three battle masters or two battle masters and a grasshopper that are just sitting out here ready to rain down shots. Laser vomit. The one Osiris just kind of sitting here chilling. Um, and you've got one really far back little mech just staring at Gamma. That little um, that little flea just kind of hanging out, waiting with his uh, with his tailpipes and his mohawk. Oh, is that part of uh, way over there? Yeah, but that uh, but that fight in Sigma is happening, man. They're pushing on up. They've got people capping the point. That little wolfhound's throwing out damage on that bushwhacker. This is it. Point, Sigma. And that's the capture on Sigma. That commando looking really smoky. That bushwhacker already opened up. Yeah, the annihilator. Torso. So. Yeah, not a good place for him, and he's pushing up way too hard. Yep, that bushwhacker trying to do damage, and there it goes, losing pieces already. It's okay, he doesn't need that arm anyways. I hear they have another one, or they could probably pick one up and weld it back on. I don't know. It is true, there'd be some spare parts around here. I'm, I'm sure somewhere. That commando disengaging, heading back out, moving away from Sigma, wrapping around with, uh, who else is over there? I don't know, that rifleman's still trading shots down with the other battle masters. I'm wondering what that rifleman's got on that's actually doing any damage out there to the battle masters, or if it's just a sheer psychological effect getting pinged over and over again. He has four AC twos. Hmm. I don't know if he's gonna have enough ammo against a bunch of battle masters. I don't know. That's uh. Because he might just be wasting the ammo, right? Well, Fury making the push here. Yeah. Up. Oh. There goes that bushwhacker. Yeah, we knew Dropping he was quick. Second mech down. Xavier and that wolfhound look on a little dicey, as well as that one uh, battlemaster one G near Solon. down to sixty-eight. Although I don't think Fury is pushing out. I they should have pushed just up and to the right a little bit to close a little bit of distance. And here come the worms. Oh, how that grasshopper's legged. Oh, is he? Oh yeah. Watch my hobble. Watch my hobble. He's not looking too happy, man. Well, that catapult's open CT. Oh, Black Templar. And there goes the Commando 2D. We're down. We're looking at 3 to 6 yet again. This is a little rough. Catapult down to 58%. The Annihilator, 77% taking shots. 
the Rifleman 3. Is he still sitting back? Is he still sitting back? Hanging out? Trying to trade from afar? He is closing, oh, he's closing the distance, the but... Here we go. What's he going to do? Is this where Merksar drops back and sucks him into a big hole and just fights one avenue, introducing the Fatal Funnel? They got to make those shots, though. They got to. And those Lerms got to be effective. If they're not doing real damage and hurting people... No, oh, they are it's hurting gonna get dicey solo. quick. Oof. Solon down to 17%, and that's it. That catapult taken down that poor, poor Battlemaster. Rest Although we got... Oh. Friend. The clag is real. Yeah, the rifleman going down. <sighs> Ooh. And there it goes. Although, we'll see how this goes. We got the Osiris. The juice is loose. Pushing on Frio in general combo. Oh, that Osiris picking shots up on that uh, that Annihilator. This is going to be interesting. Oh, he's super 99%. He's brand new out of the factory. Yeah. Yup. I'm pretty sure you still got those factory paper mats, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and there goes the Annihilator. Last one. All he's got to do. Get in close. And that's the ball game. Down goes the catapult A1. Yeah, good another good match for Merckstar. That was a lot of clag, my friend. I expect a lot of damage from that missile boat. That, that better be some serious damage. So let's see uh, the tail of the tape and what these stats say. Yeah, run through I mean, the numbers here. I'm, I'm interested. So Merkstar, the Juice is loose with that Osiris, doing uh, doing 200 damage. Proteus and that Flea 17 hitting only 20, but I mean, he was guarding that one point. He was playing a role. He was doing what he needed to do. Uh, we've got Damocles 1 and that Battlemaster 1G, one of those just doing work with 580. The other Battlemaster 1G doing 534. Um, Xavier and that Wolfhound 2R, that mid-range trade, that solid... 398, that's beastly right there. And Black Templar and that Grasshopper doing 313. Not bad at all. Weapons oh, online. So what do we got over on Furious side? Furious, we got 718 from the Annihilator damage-wise. General combo and catapult with 650, 6 damage, our opponents destroyed, sorry. Although El Kazik, 24 T damage, I know I was watching him light up the Annihilator in the back for at least a second. Uh, we, we've got a saying when it comes to war crimes, it was just an accident, it was a slip of the trigger finger, everything's fine, everything's fine, normal, it's okay. It is These things fine, happen. yes. And then, yeah, 333 from Varial and the Rifleman 3C. So he was doing lots of damage from that vantage point of his downrange. So good on him. Hitting those Battle Masters. Well, if we got some time, let's do that giveaway. Weapons online. Or we'll just tell them to give us time. Yeah, I mean, either way. There we go. Oh, the people. A lot of people here, too. For a thousand MC. See who wants it. And we can't win it, can we? No, we cannot. <sighs> no. You guys can always tell the system's concentrating. It's really quiet, and he gets that look on his face. I just want people to just, listen to the sweet music. So, Craven Dark Shadow, my man, who's going to be casting the D4 versus Tutway Black Watch. You know where I'm at. You can just whisper, holler at me, System Belmont. I'm gonna give you a thousand MC, my friend. Don't spend holler it all on strippers. Him. Because you know it's it's the '90s, and we're in Solaris again. This is the thing. We're good. Yep. <laughs> all right, so we got to swap sides and grab places, don't we? Online. This is it. Huh? Yes. Yo. 
Don't listen to Xavier. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He taught me a neat little trick, man. You didn't teach me a neat little trick. I never have to hold the lobby. I never know. <laughs> I had a different method that I was told not to do. Oh. Being violent had other other ways of doing things. Then they're like, ah, don't do it that way. And I was like, ah, but it works so nice. <laughs> Well, I mean, we got a little bit of time. Weapons online. Let's look at tactics map. Yeah, that's how it works. Are we sure? Yes, ish. So ish? Team two, that was Merkstar. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Smartly came and took Sigma and then came back to Epsilon to hold the cap points when after Furia took Gamma and then buggered off. That was her commando. Where the rest of them went to Kappa and then we're having a party out in Gamma 3. Yeah, and that whole hold point was right here behind Epsilon just kind of chilling. Um... It was a really nice place. So they just had clean overwatch for Gamma and Sigma the entire way. Um, Fox 10, Golf 10, just kind of sitting there chilling with elevation and line of sight on both points, just punishing anybody who messed with them. That rifleman we saw coming in from Echo 7 just railing shots down in Fox 10, but with one mech with that range, how effective was it? Um, you're talking over a 1,000 meters of damage and pain, and that's about a point if you're lucky. Yeah, there's no other points on this map you can control like that except behind Epsilon there in the in the 10 line. Because the Team 1 side's too low, the Team B side is... I think it's... Well, it's cap is cut off anyway, so you're screwed. So, I mean, they did what they could. But... It was a thing. It was definitely a thing. Yeah, Merck start getting the just the better position in that map and holding it. All right, both teams are lock system. Let's do this, man. Yes, sir. Weapons online. Hey man, your mic doesn't suck to me, okay? You always say the sweetest things to me. I'm a sweet guy. Ish. <laughs> I'm still not taking you out for steak after this. Uh, <laughs> I'll take delivery, it's fine. <laughs> Just ship a UPS. We could do that, we could do that. It's a thing. Waiting for the music. Here it goes. All right, who's flying into me? I believe it's Merkstar. With almost the same drop again. The Wolfhound 2, Warhammer, Osiris, Flea, and two Battlemasters. What do you have on the... Ho! Oh, Furia, tell, me, tell the people. Five Dragon, five ends with a Commando 2D. Holy sweet, merciful Jesus and that. Those are all triple UAC 2 builds, man. This is going to get interesting quick. The DPS and the range on these things is going to be insane. And we've got that one commando who just feels just a little out of place with a uh, inadequacies missing an arm with ballistics. But that's yeah. okay. We love him anyway. Is that what JJ16 is doing in that commando? He's going to go take Kappa and then come back? Maybe. It looks like it. It looks like he's rounding for Kappa. So we'll see. That, uh, that super fast, super tanky little mini Atlas just uh, running with a little Johnny Five Spirit there to grab that cap point. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Five Spirit. Yeah, three old Tracy Twos and Virial. Yeah, that's gonna be could be interesting pretty quick. Johnny Five is alive, system. Don't don't uh, don't mech shame me, man. 
Yeah, that is right. <laughs> Oh, and if Fury can get high mounted positions here and all the angles with those Dragon 5 ends, oh man, it's going to be brutal. Kappa is under enemy control. Enemy forces have Sigma. Yeah, because these Merc Star mechs are still way out here. Long range mechs again, but they are still far out. What are they running those Battlemasters, man? 5ER large and 6ER large. Okay, and what about that Warhammer? 6R? Uh, 4ER large. Okay, okay. Respectable, respectable. Yes, 4ER large. So he's probably got a lot of heat sinks. Heat sinks, uh. Well, smart job by Furia getting the cap lead off the bat. Not yet, but it's mm -hmm. coming. That, uh, that little commando running his little heart out looking for his buddies. <laughs> yeah. Looks like he might be running for Gamma, though. Because he's a strong, independent mech that don't need no dragon support. Yeah. That's so what it looks like. It looks like Merkstar is pulling the same maneuver. They're setting up behind Epsilon, just kind of chilling, setting up power points. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's... Why would you not have Overwatch on Sigma, at least? They don't need it. They've got Gamma and Sigma. If you look if you look back behind Epsilon, those Battlemasters can see clearly to Sigma. I know, but now they're and losing it. To Gamma. Oh, you're talking about... Um, Furia. Furia. Yeah, yeah I'm why sorry. they're moving around now. Um, see, now Furia is doing something interesting, and this is what I expected and was kind of hoping for last match that we'd see was uh, degradation down to a brawl and fear looks like they're pushing right to epsilon they're going to pick up one side or the other and they're going to roll either the sigma side or the gamma side and just force a brawl with the dps they're going to get out of those dragons so we'll see um if those battle masters those energy boats can keep cool enough to fight versus that daca from those dragons that's right yeah and i think you either they're going to keep rolling around or they're going to wait for the little buddy there to touch gamma yeah, if they touch Gamma and they trigger something, they're going to be looking one side. Oh, the Juice knows where they are, so... He has seen some of them. There goes the strike down. Oh, Artillery's the name. Red Smoke is the game. I know it a little too well. Oh, Prototellus. Oh, you're going to be in a bad place, buddy. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. General Does Combo's going to have a heyday. Oh, here it goes. That flea's about to have a really bad... Yep, there it goes. That's going to tickle. Here comes the roll from the dragons. Breathing fire, kicking ass, and taking some names. Those Battlemasters backing up, hoping to use their high mounts. Yeah, Combo just a bit ahead of the pack there, but now they are all together, so it's... Oh, man. Combo down to 72%. Smartly oh, backing right. out. Here's the rest of the team. Are those racks? Do I see racks on one of those dragons? Oh, that might be on El Kazakh. Yeah, Democles getting hurt out there. Ooh. Democles down to 46%. Xavier down to 88. Prototellus down to 87. Those dragons are looking fresh. Minus combo. Still at 71%. It's still a young man's game. We're good. They have resource point yep. This is it. We need to see some push from these dragons, and we're going to. Oh, this is going to be brutality. They are so close. Don't back up, guys. Keep it going. I mean, they got oh, nice no. lines, too. They're landing and spread out so they can all shoot at the same time. Those dragons losing those arms, those are two dragons without weapons anymore, man. Oh, is that's, it two? That, oh, oh, that's three. That's three. That's not good. No. Oh, that's smart focus fire from Merkstar. Yup. Yup. That's four. One more. One more. Mmm. The pain. The pain. Mm. So is it just Virial? Oh yeah, I believe it's just Virial. All Merkstar needs to do. Oh, well, he's got to finish Democles at least. Push on up and start doing some damage, and then you send your light packs over to these dragons and just. That's oh, it. That's, that's it. the ball game. That commando, JJ two sixteen, the only mech with weapons left. This is going to be painful. 
And did Furia just capture Epsilon? Uh, yeah, they figure screw it. They're they're done for. All right, here we go. Just time to burn them all down. It's a strategy. Head for respects and chat. Some GGs and fighting spirit. That was an interesting strat. I dig it. Yep. Dragons are always a fun, interesting mech. But uh, you see here why why I'm personally tentative about bringing them into combat like that. Yep. It's like a panther. You gotta you gotta be careful. Panther to me is a little bit better because you're at least you're gonna shoot it and you're gonna back off. And free you know, you're gonna twist. Posting up in uh, in all chat, calling it a, a GG. It's a loss anyway. They're just letting it go at this point. So JJ goes down. Al Kazik goes down. Now they're just letting them f finish it all off. Oh man, look at Democles too. Oh, it's just <laughs> it's general so combo insane. on Theta. Well, <laughs> when and grim. Yeah, right. Bunch of bunch of jive. Just time to throw down. Just some GTS and finishing it off, boys. We'll get it on up for the next one. So, um, what's the new uh, what's the new map? We got a one last map, right? Yes, sir. So what are we looking at? Canyon Network. Canyon? Oh, Canyon. I had to think about that for a second. You know, and it's it's really kind of funny. A lot of people talk to me and they're like, Jack, you say it time and time again, but Canyon's still your second map. You played Worlds 2016. You played how many matches on it? You spent how much time on it? Anyone who's played Worlds has played too much Canyon. And you know what, man? I still love it. I'm still a favorite. Or I'm still a, a, a fan. Still a favorite map of mine. I was happy even, about the new one. But even the new map. Right. The, the iteration uh, Hiberno Rift, I still like it, man. It's They added a little extra to it, but other than needing a set of sunglasses at night to play on it, I'm digging it. So here we yeah, go. A set of sunglasses is right. Um, we're seeing some big damage from uh, from near Solon with that Battlemaster 1G again. Just ripping those long range shots with those long burns. That was an interesting match. Right, Xavier with Weapons the 356. Online. Doing 347. Black Templar's Raptor doing 272. The juice is loose with a very respectable 331 in Osiris. And Protellus and that flea doing a 324. Not bad. Yeah, those are nice numbers. Yeah, it's just too bad for those dragons. Just never got to do what they needed to do. Yeah, 273, highest damage from Fury there in the Burial. And it was looking so good too. I was loving that dock a push with just all five of them spread out, nice lines. And are we swapping sides too or no? No, that is it. Okay. Merc star looking pretty Weapons fresh after online. that match. And no real team damage. You got uh, you got Damocles with a little uh, nine point little squeaker, but uh, nothing too bad. I'm digging it. Yep. No, MS has been watching their tape, doing things right, doing some research, putting it all together. And they're even down Kamichiwa, who is their leader tonight too, because he's six. So. I will meet you. I hope you feel better, man. I think it's going to be rough. You're not feeling too good. Yeah. 
minutes while we were just waiting for our MS to bring one guy back in. Yep. Yeah, just MS just all over Furia in these drops. Mm-hmm. We'll see what Furia does in this drop to see what they can change things up and try to get MS off their off their horse. Cause they gotta do something here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start putting tint on your mechs when you drop uh, the Bernal Rift there. I know a dude who set up a garage who will do any light mech for like 20 bucks. You know what? Just yeah, we, could, we could do this, yeah. Well, if we got some time, we can look at the old map. Again. Weapons online. Looks like we're just waiting for MS. Looks like uh, Furia might be uh, ready to go. Because we had what? Yeah, we had blue side. We took Gamma and slowly, slowly with those Warhammers and Battlemasters worked their way back to the F-10, G-10 line. Mm -hmm. Whereas we had... Furia get Kappa and come back after their team took Sigma and went back towards the Epsilon line behind Epsilon and came up and when it all started going well, it all started going downhill, which kind of sucked. I mean, the strat was there, the thought process was there, you know, rush through cover, close the gap, throw down some DPS and hopefully burn down some range. Where I think it really came apart on uh, Furia, and it it was just a matter of marksmanship. MS had that that fine tune ability to just rip those arms off those dragons, and at that point it was done. Um, they had it all set up there behind Epsilon, and it was it was ready to go. I was actually really excited seeing that coming down the pike, and um, it just kind of fell apart for them. Yeah, I don't know if there was any other way to do it too. Like I said, they. They maybe could have backed off and used longer range, to maybe not get, try not to get the arm shot off, because it's you know the closer you are, the easier it is. But yeah. MS knew what to shoot for, took full advantage of it. Yeah. So thanks for ruining the fun, Merkstar. Jeez, what are they trying to do? Play a comp game or something? Oh, um, trying to win? Sheesh. We're the beer and pretzels, man. That's right. Oh, that's well, Snack Watch took them, so I'm sorry. Well, don't fucking Snack Watch. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. But we have so many snacks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Even if they had posted up in Echo 6, Echo 7 where that rifleman was before and tried to hit one mech at a time, I don't think it would have been any different. You basically needed all five dragons to be in line with one mech at a time to... Or you had like full capability on slicing the pie and shit like that. You never take it for a fight and the way they pivoted, they cut the corner and they pressed, they didn't... I don't know. From what I see, it didn't look like they were really focusing one mech in particular each time and trying to burn them down too fast. It looked like they were just kind of doing a, a standard line and a press, and they were going and they were shooting at whatever they could see. Yeah, like I was, I seen Toaster in chat. I think he wanted them to hit the edge of the map and run the far side and roll up, so at least you had your your gun arm on the outside. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, other than Democles almost going down, a few of the after that, there was just not enough focus fire. 
between them to yeah. in the same time to take down another mech to the same and, damage level. And again, I, I talk about that power point behind Epsilon. Um, Merkstar used it extremely well. They saw the push. They started dropping back, and the high mounts on those battle masters were just utilized so pretty. Yeah, you gotta take advantage of those breast mounts. It was just high mount pew pew, just all day, baby. The fans not happy that Merkstar is getting no team damage. Well, I mean, you come for the mech porn, you stay for the war crimes, right? That's the way we do things over in my neck of the woods anyway. That is right. I mean, if Red Smoke and Unfriendly, you're doing something wrong, right? Yep. Still waiting for MS to get the last guy in here. It looks like they were having problems with uh, an invalid mech selection. They had the six in there, and they dropped back out, and they're back in, and they're dropping back out. And... Yeah, looking at those damage numbers again, just so so freaking close. It's like they're so even. It's a very nice spread. Well, I wonder if we'll see an old map strap. Maybe they'll just push Epsilon, brawl it out. Who knows? Ooh, that Epsilon high side push with mid range? That'd be interesting. That'd be really interesting. I can dig it. Uh, see if they had saved the dragons. Which side are they on? Looks like Charlie's side. If they're locked, anyway. I'm assuming, guessing, it's going to depend on that, uh, that last uh, mech. It looks like MS is still having problems. Oh, okay, so MS... Oh no, Fury is team 2, right? Yep. Oh, had to, oh man, had they saved the dragons for this drop, you could have just put them in the junkyard and just had Overwatch all day. Alright, here we go. Looks like this is it. Can we do it? Can we do it? Weapons online. We're ready. Oh. We are not ready. All right. Looks like they got it. We're just waiting on Fury to lock, and uh, we'll do this. You had me all hard, and I was, yeah, ready to go. Oh. 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 Sons of bees. I need more beverages. There's a, a new service in my area. We could order snacks to the house, man. Just saying. I'm a little upset, though. They don't do protein bars or protein shakes. Snacks? Are we talking, like, grocery aisle, snack aisle snacks? Yeah, like, I could order some, like, taquitos and, like, a couple bags of Funyuns and you know, a couple Cokes and call it a day. And I'll also deliver, like, pap like uh, toilet paper and, like, uh, minor stuff for, like, the household or some, like, dish soap or whatnot. How awful is this world? I, I don't want to get my snacks, so I'm going <laughs> to get my snacks delivered. With some groceries, too. With some groceries. Yeah, I'm low on toilet paper, so. I mean, wasn't... Who was... Domino's was getting the... The pizza drop in whatever the frickin' things those are called now. Damn it! <laughs> drones. Pizza flying drones. I think this is it. Can we do it? Can we play the ready up game? We got this. Got nothing to talk about. We're talking about snacks. You know, man, have you looked at the new Rifleman 2Cs? 
I have not. I'm a poor man. So I'm looking at the Rifleman 2Cs, and I'm kind of excited about a couple of them. They're not, you know, I'm not seeing, like, and I hate to say this because I hate giving commentary about mechs before I can actually get into them, build them, and pilot them, but I was excited about one in particular. It's got an HSL for a large pulse. So you can run four large pulse lasers on a 60 tonner. And here we go. We're doing it. We're hitting that watch button. I'm not sleeping at this wheel. Uh uh. Yeah. Well, I, did, I never liked the Rifleman. So the Rifleman 2C seems like a better mech to me. It's Clan Man. Of course, it's a little better, right? Yeah. <laughs> So here we go, a Sigma lineup leaning out towards Epsilon for uh, for Furia. So for Furia, I see a Catapult A1, a Wolfhound 2, two Catapult A1s, an Annihilator 2A, a Wolfhound 2, and a Commando 2D. This is going to get interesting. It's going to get Did claggy. They bring the clag? Oh my god, is this happening? Yeah, Merkstar brought the Victor 9A1, a Thunderbolt, Wolfhound, War Hammer Master thing, Vulcan 5T, and another Wolfhound. Oh man, we're gonna have a sweet Epsilon push! <laughs> there it goes, they're doing it! We're pushing straight for it. W for victory, man! Oh, Xavier eating all the flag? I don't see any AMS. Oh, uh, no. I don't see any either. No ECM. No AMS. Mer Xavier's down to 75%. Yeah, he's trying They're to lined up. They got the DAC on the back with the Annihilator. They got two catapults down either side. Yeah, they were. This is getting dicey quick. Putting missiles on Shan rank in the Victor. They know he's uh, trouble. That's a lost lock. Oh, Vamberly just lost something. Bro, oh, it's not too critical, though. Ooh, that commando is missing its arms. That's a problem. Good strikes by Merkstar, though. Oh, yeah, Xavier in a bad place right now. That commando down to 61%. Ah, two Goss 4 ER mediums for Democles and that Warhammer. Mm hmm. Xavier's looking hurt. Strike would have been good just a few seconds earlier. Oh, yeah, he's got that open torso. Oof. Not a good place. That Victor, is that three AC-10s, LBX-10s? Three AC-10s, two medium laser. Oof. Missile, boat, Kappa. Oh, Oh, they need to drop strikes right on that that plateau over there. Corner. Yep. Because they're holding them in there perfectly behind her. Oh, this Warhammer smoking bad back here. Yep. Down to eighty percent, and he's open already. Woo! That gauze sound ripping off. Right in my ear, scaring the bejesus out of me. <laughs> totally didn't see that one coming. Everything's fine. Everything's normal. Short change aisle two, please. Shine rack and that Victor down to fifty-seven percent. We got Prototelis and that Wolfhound down at sixty-five. Yeah. But we got El Kazik down to fifty. V Rail twenty-nine down to sixty-six. Vamberly down to dead. You know, <laughs> it's, this is normal. This is fine. The damage oh, numbers are pretty even across burn. the board too, so Yeah, this is this is interesting. I'm I'm honestly a little surprised. It's hard to say, like I still think Merkstar has got the advantage, but like not by much. Yeah, not by oh ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. by lots now. Advantage. Elkazik and Vero going down on those Wolfhound 2s. 
it's the ball game. This is going to be rough. Six to three. We've got two LRM mechs and an Annihilator. Can the Annihilator hold off? Oh, and they can need... those LRMs do enough? No. There goes Venral down in that A1. We've got Everyone's another catapult smart. dropping into the valley and the Annihilator sitting right up the death ramp and just waiting to get picked apart as everybody starts the swarm. This is going to be it. Yeah, Captain A1. Oh, going down. There he goes. There's so many Herbex on this field. Oh, my God. Oh, here it goes. And that's the Annihilator. Holy man. So here goes Merkstar with another 6-0. and Good yep. on him. Some, uh, some high skill piloting. Yeah, great job on cycling the damage max out in that match. Holy crap. Dang good job from them. Yeah, look at Paul oh, Frio and 710 in that Annihilator. Damn good job, my man. Jeez, yeah. And those catapults, 524. Oh, that's too bad for Venral. Just didn't get enough off. Yeah. 260. But yeah, Democles 1 doing a great job in that Warhammer with the two Goss. We've got Prototelis and that Wolfhound 2 doing 374. Near Solon and the Vulcan 5T doing 383. Warhammer 6R with Damocles doing 574. Templar's Raptors doing 249, along with Xavier and his Wolfhound doing 249. And then Shanrak and that Victor doing 240, securing two kills. The kill's pretty spread out. Damage looks pretty solid. Except for Damocles just having to be in a little bit of an overachiever. Yeah. Weapons online. God damn. God damn. So we got Xavier up in general channel. You can drag him on down. After uh, the uh, conclusion of an exhilarating match between uh, Merkstar and Furia. It's definitely good times. It was a pleasure seeing some of these teams come out and kick smash and take some names in this tournament. And uh, thanks to both teams and everybody for coming out and watching me cast my first match. This was uh, a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun. Xavier, how's it going, my dude? How's things? Oh, a lot better now. <laughs> I, I, I bet. I actually breathe a sigh of relief now. There you go. Yeah, we're waiting for. Well, we can we can start with Xavier and when uh, General Combo. That's what we're waiting for from when, Fury. When Combo steps in, we can uh, we can pick up with him. But um, Xavier, what did you think coming into today's match? What was uh, what was your anticipation and trepidation uh, facing this team? So we uh, we watched some of their highlights from their first match, um, and we know they're pretty committed to a uh, brawl push strat, and we weren't necessarily willing to throw our hat in the pot relative to that because when you get in those kind of engagements, it can sometimes just be a coin toss. Um, we knew on Manifold from a scrim we had earlier this week uh, with Black Omen that... Wall strat is pretty much only strat considering where the cap points are on that map. So we basically just went with uh, small mobile mechs down low and jump jet capable mechs to park up high. And basically it was the same strategy for both drops. We uh, kind of gave one away there. Um, our Phoenix Hawk in the first drop wasn't quite sure where to get up on the wall over there. Yeah, and he kind of he kind of goofed. Yeah, he kind of goofed without a bounds because he had override on, and when you have override on, it doesn't always like you can't see that you're actually out of bounds on the warning. So yeah, we we had to work a little extra hard on that one. Welcome, General Combo. Goodbye, General Combo. There he is. Hello again. Do you have sound? Doesn't look like he's broadcasting. 
pushed it, Doc? It, you done broke it. Yeah, because I thought uh, Fury was doing a good job into... Like, you could see them when they came out of the door. You guys stomped, stopped them a bit, and then they went after the, the Vulcans. And then came back... Yeah, the um the 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 Vulcans um were they were just grabbing one of the corner caps and we had them bounce out when they pushed mechs out the gate. And when they split their forces, we just we decided to have the Vulcans come in around the backside because we had opened up the bushwhacker shoulder and the rack two bushwhacker was really the the mech that was giving us fits up on top. I know Damocles ate a lot of damage from him up top. So we felt important to get that mech out of there. And when they were split in their forces, we had confidence in our two Vulcans with uh, Juice and Nier down there to go ahead and, and gank that mech and get out before the rest of the forces got back. Yeah, we watched you guys sneak underground there with uh, the trebuchet and the bushwhacker, the fresh Vulcans there. Basically getting the opportunity to even the odds. So that was interesting. Gumb, are you still still having troubles? Damn it! Yeah, we're. <laughs> he was telling me he can't hear us, but yeah, I still get nothing from you. Oh. Well, that sucks. Oh, yeah, Cyclone's busy. Still got nothing from you, General. Well, let's talk about Drop 2, then. Okay. Because Drop 2... Yeah, we watched you guys... <laughs> I, I watched you guys fumble your way up the wall, which was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, well... The, the the sad part about that was we knew that if we drop mechs on the corners that it would probably invoke some sort of a brawl rush to that corner. And uh, we had a couple clipping issues where we were going up in chain, but a couple people clipped into the others right in mid-jump. So we had to wait for jump jets to recharge. We kind of fumbled the jump up. Um, it was supposed to be orderly, but definitely was not clean at all. General, I seen you light up. Talk to me. Talk to me, buddy. Talk to me, Goose. Yeah, because you definitely sucked him into that brawl bush. Like you said, that's basically you. You figured they'd come hit that hit that uh, gate there, and you guys had yeah. the top right off the bat and into the lights coming in. Yep. To support on both sides of the gate. Yeah, and we just we just circled them around. We figured if we could get our lights in on the back side in that mead pulse range in those choke points, they either had to push out and get shot in the back or hold the corner and trade unfavorably. So, Yeah, no, it was, it was hard to watch because you had them pinned down hard. There was nothing, nothing they could do, basically. General, can you hear us? Oh, no, you're muted. He's completely muted now. Well, Xavier, thank you for an exciting match and a lot of fun. It was definitely interesting to watch. Because you got to run right now? Yeah, unfortunately, I have to take off. Y'all have a wonderful night. See you, Cyclone. Thanks for casting. Absolutely. Have a good one. Oh, good. Thanks for joining me, buddy. Oh, it's getting so lonely in here now. So, yeah, we'll talk about the Canyon Network. Where did you guys get that strat from? So not Canyon, Grimplexus. Or, or Grimplexus. So we've held a bunch of mid map hold strats for those same two cap points, and they haven't been working for us as great as we would have liked. And someone pulled a page out of I believe this is an old JGX strategy, if I'm not mistaken. Um from something we had seen before. Oh, there, wait, I think he lit up. Oh, we can hear you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I tested it just before the game started to confirm, like, for sure that it is working. And it was working then, but, uh, yeah, not now. So I had to re reinstall everything. Sorry. No, it's perfect. Glad you're here. 
So we're just discussing drop three now. Did you guys have troubles with the way they were set up or where they were set up in drop three and four in Grim Plexus? No! Uh, I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Because I remember watching that strat before. And I thought yeah. it was Blackwatch. Maybe it was Blackwatch. I can't, I can't remember who the who the setup was on the... Because someone, someone pulled it up as a suggestion. Um, I realized that from the center point there, you could basically hold Sigma and Gamma and just deny it forever with ER large and basically force the teams into some sort of a push around the corners. And then it just came down to how well you received the push. Yeah, because what did you guys take from drop four with the dragon push? I was, I was, yeah, me and Cyclone were both excited to see that. But it did not go well for you guys on the Furia side. Yeah, so that was the that was the adjustment we we made, right? We we seen at the time that uh, other team is playing like almost everyone is playing the the a very long range, so we wanted to change it. Uh, we weren't prepared uh, too much from our end for the long range engagement, so we wanted to strategize and go to the mid range or or close range in most of the drops. So that was the adjustment we made. We wanted to have the, the mechs that are capable of, of uh, shooting at long range, right? But as well are pretty fast and, and the, the flank worked uh, from the strategic point of view. But uh, you guys are just shooting uh, the, the hands too well, right? And, and obviously that, that I would say was the, the thing that uh, lost for us the drop for losing too much hands. Yeah, I was listening to Cyclone because I think he was running through the mechs and he was like, yeah, that's one arm down. Well, that's two arms down. That's almost that's three. And I'm like, holy shit, like that's that's half the team weaponless. Yeah, we had we had a dragon counter and we were counting how many dragons we had lost the arms. So we knew how much we had to deal with. Yeah, because your guys focus fire on the dragon arms was damn near amazing, basically. Yeah, we we actually had a suspicion that something like that was coming when we didn't see the mechs. Um, that's kind of why we we had a light on each corner of each wall. It was just a matter of which side they came around. Yeah, because I think the juice is loose. Saw them, saw Furia, because I think he shot one of the dragons in the back. But you guys kept moving. And yeah, um, I, I, actually, I think a Proto in the flea was actually on that corner because I think he got shot first. Yeah, Is Proto got shot first. Out? Yeah. Yep. I was the one engaging him on flare. I was yeah. The first one to shoot. <laughs> yeah. And and our, our thought by putting the flea up front was if we could draw their initial focus on the small mech up front, then buy a few extra seconds for our assaults up on the ridge. Well, yeah, because Democles almost went down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was he, he yeah. twisting in a battle master, thirty three percent health at the end. We 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 were giving him a hard time about that. Yeah, because I think he was forty percent by the time. You guys, General Combo, and the rest of Furious didn't couldn't shoot him anymore. And so before they started running up. Yeah. yeah, you reacted very well to this push, and yeah, you set up very nice firing line on the ridge. Like there was a red every few centimeters on the screen, right from left to the right of the screen. Like all six were side by side, just shooting, focusing very nicely, and and uh, that was very nicely played from you. So let's talk drop five, because I was, woo, we were very excited about drop five, bringing more Lerms and Clag to, and I thought things were going very well for, things were so even in drop six until one mech died. Because you guys brought, Xavier, you guys had the uh, Democles with the Goss, the Victor, the, uh, no, what the hell is we had We had two, yeah, we had two Wolfhounds, a Vulcan. One Thunderbolt, one Victor, and a Warhammer. Yeah, the Thunderbolt, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And it just... I thought, like you said, with uh, with the Annihilator and the rain of missiles that were coming in, you guys, and they basically held you behind that plateau for so long, I thought they were going to hold the match. Yeah, with I think with the amount of Lerms we were dealing with, um, the plateau and the High Rocks became our friends. 
Um, I think what was most important for us was uh, we had that uh, the Goss Hammer sitting back there in Echo 5, and I think he got some initial shots off on some mechs that were peeking the corner, which kind of make them back away from Epsilon a little bit, which then got him the ability to move up towards that um, that high rock in D6 and shoot down Epsilon Valley towards Junkyard. Uh, yeah. As soon as he was able to relocate forward, then we knew we could just wrap around the corner because uh, they had lost high ground vision at that point. But the uh, the commando early, I think we took his arms, so we knew he had been ganked, and then uh, Shanrat got a nice strikeout over in C5 to finish off the commando because we knew he had had op- open shoulder. And then it was just a matter of just picking off one at a time at that point. Yeah, because was, I can remember who was in the Annihilator. did great numbers on the Furious side. Three oh. So it was nice. From our perspective, the drop five was like a little bit more fun drop because it's 4 a.m. here, so we are uh, pretty much wasted uh, <laughs> from the alcohol and from the time perspective. So it was, yeah, let's just go and have some fun. But still, yeah, the strategy here was like we split into groups, the long range group, the short range group. And as you said, uh, we felt uh, very nice for the first half of the match, right? It was going quite well. There were a few mechs that were under 50% uh, even. So that was looking pretty nice. But I believe the the biggest fail we did from our end was to split too much. And uh, your your, uh, Gauss guy have uh, shot in the back our lights. And yeah, we we just split the the light group from the the heavy group, from from the long range group too much. We wanted to bait to bait you one by one with the lights to come closer, right, and lure the heck out of them. So that was the initial plan, and I think that uh, in the the mess you have created with uh, hiding behind uh, so many rocks, uh, picking one side, second, uh, other side, right, switching the everything here and there, that was uh, like I believe it was quite nicely organized from your end, right? But from my perspective, I was playing on the Lorm. It was very high, hard to keep a focus on one mech, right? So we was just shooting. I, I was just personally shooting someone here, someone there. So it was not focused fire from the long range group. And I think that's that's what lost for us. So I also know having watched your matches in the past, the the one thing on Canyon that, you know, was scared me more than anything else was a fast brawl push right around that Epsilon corner, which was the entire reason we brought the, uh, the AC 10 Victor. If we needed to tank something, it was going to tank. And then we were just going to kind of fall back and kite at that point. Yep. Well, we didn't had uh, too much time. I mean, usually we spent a bit more time for preparation. Uh, this time we, we didn't spend so much time. So that's uh, blame on us for sure. I would say that with a little bit more preparation, I don't know if we would win, maybe not, but uh, it would look uh, a bit better from our end. Uh, But yeah, we wanted to swap around uh, some things, like uh, we are not the super pro team, we are uh, playing uh, in that squad like uh, pretty fresh. So, you know, we are just testing here and there some things. This is, we are, personally, I treat it as a fun only, right? So that's a good experience to play together, uh, communicate uh, and, and experience something uh, different, which is like super different from the quick play, right? And then your usual experience from the Mech Warrior, right? So uh, with that light approach, I'm still very happy about today. I mean, I learned quite a lot. Uh, I like on the HPG when I was shooting, uh, when I was on the Bushwalker and I was shooting one of your folks, like he was spinning 360 almost every time, like changing the sights. And yeah, I have never experienced uh, such a nice playing uh, enemies uh, for a very, very long time. So I'm really glad that uh, we played with you guys. It was fun. We enjoyed it. No, it was good. Yeah. But like I said, the time wise doesn't help you guys either. That's for sure. Yeah, I guess we need to push for a bit earlier matches. Yeah, it was it was actually hard for us to even get people together that eight o'clock Eastern. Most of most pilots, you know, uh, Eastern Seaboard don't get on till you know even an hour, hour and a half later than we actually started. They'd be getting on right now. I had to put my daughter to bed an hour early actually to even be able to show up. Yeah, and I could. Uh... Take a screen. Uh, I could take a picture right now of a uh, sun slowly rising up. I see the, the <laughs> sky yeah, so, getting uh, brighter. 
So I, I think it's shared pain on both our parts at this point, to some degree. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for letting me and Cyclone cast it, guys. I was happy to cast Furia for the first time. I was happy to give MS a go here in this season too. So thanks for having me. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for good matches. Yep. Thank you as well. Yep. Sorry thanks, General. Good games. Over. Yep. Good game, guys. Yep. You guys have a good. Yeah. Go to sleep. Have a good Heck sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Xavier, awesome. Thanks, System. You guys have a good one. Bye bye. Uh, all right, so that'll be it for me and Cyclone. Thank you for joining me earlier. I know he is gone now. He had other things to attend to. So everybody stay tuned. In 50 minutes, I believe it will be D4 versus 228 Black Watch. And then half an hour from that on MW Leaks 2, it will be Aces Wild versus Aces Wild. Someone's taking the crown, baby. I don't know. I'm going to find out. Stay tuned.